Hey, what's up, Street Talks? Eric Kim from the Eric Kim Street Photography Blog. So, wanted to do a quick review of the new Rico GR version 2. You can see this is the Rico GR 2 P because I put some gaffers tape on it. <laughs> but, anyways, uh, I did a very brief review of the GR 2 on my blog, but I realized I didn't actually do a YouTube review. Long story short, it is quite possibly my favorite digital camera of all time. Of course, this is when until the new Ricoh GR version 3 probably comes out full frame or whatever. But for those of you guys who don't know much about the Ricoh GR, it's a cult classic, meaning the actual film cameras made by Ricoh, they look pretty much the same. It's almost kind of equivalent to, uh, let's say, a film Leica that even with the new digital Leicas, the body style hasn't changed. And I, I'm really passionate about good design, and I do believe that great designs like old school Porsches and stuff like that, they never die. If they kind of get it once, uh, right once, they kind of really have it right. Uh, one cool new digital camera that just came out is a new Fujifilm X70, which is pretty much a Fujifilm X100T with the same sensor in the size of a point and shoot, kind of similar to the Ricoh GR uh, version 2. Uh, basic overview of the Ricoh GR version 2, it's a small point and shoot compact camera that literally fits in your front pocket. When you turn it on, you can see the the lens protrudes. With the, the new Fujifilm X70, it does not. And technically the, the Fujifilm X70 is the superior camera in theory. It's got a it's got a better sensor. It's a lot faster in terms of uh, you know just autofocus and uh, the, the time it takes to turn on and the, the buffer is really fast. One of the downsides of the Ricoh GR is the autofocus is quite slow and also the buffer fills up relatively quickly, uh, quickly, meaning when you take multiple photos in quick succession, the LCD screen will actually go blank. So for a digital camera that has its flaws, why am I really interested in it? Well, first of all, it's quite possibly one of the most ergonomic cameras ever made. I mean, we're in the, the point where there's no bad cameras anymore. All the new digital cameras are all fantastic cameras. And I think the only things that are left to innovate is just to make it comfortable in your hand and make the menus very clean and intuitive. One thing, one um, the new Fujifilm X70, I wanted to like it over the Ricoh GR, but even one stupid thing I prefer the GR is if you just click this here, <laughs> it opens up the pop-up flash, which I use a lot when it comes to uh, shooting street photography, especially the street portraits. Also, another benefit is it's still technically smaller and thinner than the X70. Once again, this literally fits in your front pocket. And, you know, when you turn on, the lens extends just uh, a little bit. Also, one thing I really appreciate about this camera is the fact that the menus are just so minimalist. So if I turn on the camera and, let's see, center button is uh, the menu. So, oops, don't want to do that. <laughs> right, let me turn it back on again. So, out of all the digital cameras out there, it seems like the digital camera made by the Ricoh GR, the engineers really were photographers because they kind of knew what they were doing. It's pretty awesome, actually. Um, whoa, the camera just locked up. Oops. I don't know what's going on. But anyways, let's see. Okay, let's give it another go. Okay, so we have the menu, and if you kind of go through the menu, it's just, yeah, I don't know why it's doing that. But anyways, um, there you go. Yeah, so one of the big benefits is you could do snap focusing, which means that you could pre-focus to a certain distance. You know, all these different features. I usually shoot in high contrast, black and white. You could do, there's a crop mode. You could do a 35 millimeter or a 47 millimeter. It's just... Um, by default, the Ricoh GR is a 28 millimeter full frame equivalent. But if you just want to, you know, shoot in a 35 millimeter, you could do that. All these other things that you could change. I'm just gonna kind of quickly flick through this. And the thing I like about it is that the menus are quite comprehensive, yet not full of fluff like often the the Fuji cameras, especially the Sony cameras, are just horrible for that. So with um, with the Ricoh GR camera, it's very easy to find all the things you need to do, and it's it's quite simple to to set up. And one of the biggest benefits I find about the Ricoh GR is when I'm shooting with it, it's the type of camera that looks super unassuming because it's just low black point and shoot camera, 
And it also has like a macro function. You just push the, the top button, which means that you can focus to something super close to you. Yeah, I don't know why it's giving me this format car issue. Anyways, and not only that, but when you're shooting, um, yeah, I don't know. This is this is a really bad review because my my SD card is having issues. But anyways, we're gonna go on with the show. One of the most beneficial things of this camera is that this direct ISO dial, which means, god damn it. I'm going to take out the stupid SD card. Damn you, SanDisk. You are a piece of crap. Anyways, turn it back on. So if you want to adjust um, the ISO, this little dial here, which is called the direct uh, ISO dial, you could dial this to the right and left. And you can see here on the bottom, is changing it very easily. And I find this way, 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 way more easy than going through any stupid menus to change your ISO. Also another benefit is this ISO quick dial. You just push this in the center. And you can also customize the screen. So generally in the top, I have it customized. So it's, you know, a center point autofocus, spot AF in the center. And just in case I do snap mo mode, which is pre-focusing to a certain distance, I usually keep it at about one meter. And just in case you could just adjust the ISO here. But it's, it's quite simple in terms of uh, everything I have set up there. And generally what I have it set up by default, it's a little bit hard to see here, but you could add this, um, let's see, can you see it? Yeah, yeah, this is a little better, yeah. So you can see there's this uh, this grid overlay, which is a bunch of diagonals and stuff like that. So I'll just kind of show you some basic things which I personally set up uh, the Ricoh GR when I'm shooting it. So everything is pretty much default, except I usually keep it spot AF, so I just keep it center point autofocus, one meter, uh, I usually shoot raw, high contrast black black and white because I'm preferring black and white now. Don't use crop, I'm just shooting 28 mostly re uh, nowadays. Don't touch any of that. Let's see, what else do I change? Oh yeah, make sure the adjust direct ISO control is on. And for the function 2 button, which is this button here, you could customize it. I have it currently customized to the difference between 28 and 35 millimeter crop mode because these are two focal lengths I like to shoot uh, quite a bit with. Also, one new thing about the Ricoh GR version 2 over the Ricoh GR version 1, it's pretty much the same camera except the Ricoh GR version 2 has Wi-Fi. I personally never use it, but I know some people who do. And, and oh yeah, one thing I forgot to mention is this camera is only like 590 bucks online. It's for a camera that has an APS-C DSLR size sensor in the tiny body is absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, usually I turn off the, the volume settings and turn off sleep mode, all that jazz. Make sure the AF mode is at high speed, obviously. And this is one thing I change is you see the grid display here. You could change this into different settings. I have it in the, the diagonal mode, which helps my compositions. And yeah, turn on the function modes. Also, one big thing is under the display button, display setting, you could change um, whenever you press the display button, you toggle through these different modes. And I usually keep it on version 3, which literally turns off all these stupid graphical display, information display. The only thing I have on is the grid guide. Everything else is off. And the way you could adjust these is by just pushing the center button that toggles on and off. So you can see when I'm taking photos, if you press the display button, you could toggle, you could either turn the LCD screen totally off, you could turn it on, there's all these like unnecessary information, but by default, I just kind of keep it simple and minimalist. Uh, the way I usually shoot with this camera, I keep the camera on P mode, which is program mode, which means it, the camera automatically chooses the ISO, uh, no, you, auto, you choose the ISO by yourself. But when the camera is on P mode, the camera automatically chooses the aperture and shutter speed. So I know a lot of people who are always like, oh, you know, you want to shoot fully manual everything. And if you shoot P mode, you know, you're a noob and P stands for pro, uh, P stands for pro, haha. And people just kind of take the piss out of people who shoot P mode. But the thing that really changed my opinion a lot was I actually heard that a lot of Magnum photographers, believe it or not, shoot in P mode. And they just use their creative abilities to frame interact with their subjects and essentially get the shot 
And, you know, I know how to shoot fully manual as well. You know, I shoot with a fully manual, like a camera. But if the camera has the functionality to <laughs> do most of the thinking for you, uh, I like the idea that, you know, the camera does the thinking in terms of the technical settings, but I just focus on the, the shooting aspect part of it. Uh, one question people ask me is when I use the little pop-up flash, what settings do I use? Once again, I just keep it in P mode. If I'm shooting color, I keep the ISO around 800. I think uh, the color in this camera looks pretty good up to ISO 800. If I shoot in gritty black and white, which I shoot a lot of nowadays, you know, I usually keep it on ISO 1600 uh, as a default. And yeah, I just keep the, the flash settings as default, the automatic settings, and it, it works quite well. And uh, I, I don't mind taking this camera up to ISO 3200. I haven't really shot at 6400 much because it's never that dark, but even so, it's not uh, a real big issue. Another one big tip I want to give for this camera is, so essentially there's this mode here in the side where we could just change the effect. So, you know, there's all these different effects you could do, you know, black and white, you know, cross processing, whatever. I usually keep on high contrast black and white and the preview just shows you a super high contrasty black and white preview. And the benefit of this is that I feel like I could see the light a lot better. And because I'm shooting in raw mode, when I import the images to Lightroom, the images will revert back to raw, meaning the, the preview in Lightroom will show black and white for half a second, and then once you open it up, it turns back into color. So the way to prevent this is, uh, in Lightroom, I have like uh, some pre, uh, free presets. If you go on Google, search Eric Kim Lightroom presets, you can download them for free. I'll apply a Triax 1600 simulation upon import, meaning now when I import photos directly from uh, my SD card to my laptop, the images will make sure that they stay in black and white. And after uh, I just apply a preset, then I'll just do some basic uh, adjustments in terms of the, uh, the exposure and the brightness and whatnot. But generally the, the Triax 1600 preset I made in my Lightroom presets work really well with the Ricoh GR. It looks about maybe 80, 85% the way I like it looking in film. Of course, not as good as film, but hey, for, for, for shooting digital, for camera that's like 600 bucks, why not? Uh, another benefit of uh, shooting with this camera too is that, yeah, it's just, it's, it's just so cheap and affordable. Uh, I mean, of course, 600 bucks is still a lot of money, but compared to other digital cameras like, you know, the Fuji X100 series, which start at around like $1,100, $1,300, it's a steal. Uh, the Fuji X100, uh, X70, once again, take a look at the camera. It's also a really good camera. It's only like 700 bucks. And I think one of the biggest benefits of shooting with a compact camera is, A, you always have it with you, fits in your front pocket. And even, like, for the longest time, I always thought, you know, I buy a Leica, I'm going to bring it with me everywhere I go, whatever. It's pretty damn heavy, and it's kind of a pain in the ass to carry around, to be quite honest. And more and more, nowadays, I'm shooting more with this camera, less with that camera. Uh, my dream is to essentially only shoot with this camera because... You know, it's cheaper, more affordable, lighter, and I'm not afraid of anyone stealing it because if someone steals it, I could just go out and buy another one. And not only that, but once again, the ergonomics, it just feels super good in the hand. And it's just honestly a camera. The only thing they could really improve with it is improved autofocusing speed and accuracy, perhaps. But even so, like the longer you use it, the more comfortable you get using it. It's fine. And it's also one of these weird like cult cameras that everyone I know who has it loves it even though there's a lot of problems with it, once again. So you saw like my, I've, I've actually never had SD card issues, I don't know what that happened. But um, yeah, autofocus is slow, it's stuff like that, but I, I love it and it's it's always with me, I always keep it in my backpack. And the more money you save on your camera, obviously you can use that money to buy books, attend workshops, travel. You know on my blog I like to say buy books, not gear. Don't get me wrong, I love gear and I love my toys and whatnot too, but really, all the money I spent on all these cameras over the years, I kind of regret. And even now, like if someone stole my film Leica from me tomorrow, I don't know if I'd buy another one. I just, I'd probably just stick with this and just uh, see what I could make do with that camera. But uh, yeah, uh, I, have a, I have a more in-depth review of the Ricoh GR version 2 on my blog. I'll put it in the description below. And also a more in-depth uh, review of the prior version, the Ricoh GR version 1, which is effectively the same camera. If you want to buy something secondhand, the GR1, GR2 is not really a big issue. Just buy it wherever it's cheaper. And yeah, there's not really any 
new improvements with the Rico Jira version 2. So sorry for the technical mishaps. Thank you for watching. Uh, yeah, and Rico fanboys, hashtag Rico Mafia. One guy on my Instagram posted. It's a fun little hashtag to support. And yeah, just go out and shoot. Don't spend too much money on cameras, even though I have spent a lot of money on cameras and now I kind of regret it. <laughs> but go out, make some beautiful photos, and have fun. Peace out.